I bring you greetings on behalf of the National Bar Association. I hope I'm looking at future members of the National Bar Association. We are, as uh, the young lady mentioned, the oldest association of black lawyers and judges and law students in the country. Founded in 1925, I'm honored to serve as the current NBA president. I hail from Chicago. Anybody from the Chicago area here? Well, yes, I know you, Michelle. Anybody? <laughs> The Northwestern person raised her hand, right. Anybody else? Nobody? All right. How about Mississippi? That's where my mama named from. Okay. Yeah, Zoo City. Yes. All right. Good, good, good. All right. Um, how about Maryland? Anybody from Maryland? Okay. My wife's from Maryland, so I'll, I'll stop there. Um, any more housemen in the house? Dang. Nobody. Okay. So I'm going to um, share with you t today. It's an, honor, it's, an honor, it's an honor for me to be here. Um, I am glad to be here. Um, it's not cold yet in Chicago, but it's uh, much nicer here usually than it is there. So um, I remember when I was a student in Morehouse, my freshman year girlfriend was from Fort Lauderdale. What, why is that funny? Freshman year girlfriend? Well, yeah, I, we didn't last long. Uh, I had a sophomore year. Never mind, let me stop. Um, but freshman year, she was from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And she called me one morning because we had, it was snowflakes in Atlanta. And she was just so perplexed to see snowflakes in Atlanta. And I said, have you forgotten where I'm from? I'm from Chicago. So for us, snow was like no big deal. But for my friends who were from Florida and other parts of the country back then, it was funny to see people who had never seen snow. And so I don't know if that applies to anybody here, but um, it's nice to be somewhere warm and sunny today. So I want to talk to you about something that we don't talk a lot about. And the first speaker alluded to this and touched on it a great deal. But I want to talk about something that we as black people need to talk more about. And there's two, two concepts. I'm going to focus on one primarily, but I'm going to touch on the other. You have been told a lie. And most of you are living your life and pre preparing yourself to go to law school premised on a lie. And yes, I said it, it's a lie. You've been told that if you work hard and do good in school and make good grades and stay out of trouble, you will be successful. How many of y'all believe that? No one believes that? Oh, come on, don't, stop, don't lie to me. Y'all were taught, weren't y'all taught that? That is a lie. Because what they did not tell you is that working hard, doing good in school, getting good grades, staying out of trouble is really, really important. And that'll get you in the door. But what makes you ultimately successful is relationships and access. And see, we in black America, we don't talk about that like we should. Now our real light-skinned brothers and sisters, the real light-skinned brothers and sisters. I'm not talking about light-skinned black people right now. I'm talking about the real light-skinned brothers and sisters. They get that. They're all about relationships. We believe we need to work hard and I'm going to make it on my own. I'm going to do this by myself. You try that if you want to. We in our community have to understand that relationships will be the ultimate determining factor of your success. Because here's what you've got to realize. All y'all smart, y'all are in college. All y'all head to law school. All of you have A-type personalities. All of you are going to be at the right law school. You're going to join the right sorority or fraternity. You're going to be parted, invited to private social clubs. You're going to be invited to a lot of different private affairs, but guess what? I don't 
don't care how smart you are. If I don't like you, I'm not going to hire you. If I don't like you, I'm not going to invite you to my party. If I don't like you, and someone calls me about you, I'm going to tell them, no, not that one. Because I know a lot of smart people. I know a lot of black lawyers. I know a lot of white lawyers. I know a lot of other people I can recommend but you. And guess what? If you don't like me, you will do the same thing to me. And you've got to learn that right now. So guess what? Look around. Look, look at your colleagues. Look, look, look at each other. Look at each other right now. Take a good look. You know that person right now who you don't really care too much for? Who you just looked at? Let me tell you right now. I am 46 years old. And I'm at an age in my life where I'm watching the people that I went to college with and law school with become what they always said they wanted to be. And I'm like, dang, that crazy Negro who was a fool in college is now a judge? That sister, my freshman year girlfriend, She's a doctor now. You mean the dude who was on my line, who I never really cared for? He's the managing partner of the firm that I want to work for? <laughs> you mean that sister who lived down the hall from me? I couldn't stand her back in college? Now, she's the CEO of a major company that I want to do business with? Yeah, her. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and so, that is where I am right now in my life. I'm watching the people who I went to Morehouse with. One of my Morehouse brothers right now is running for mayor of Atlanta. I've got another Morehouse brother who's a state senator in South Carolina. Both of my frat brothers. Back in the day, we used to do stuff that Qs do when they're 19 and 20 and 21 years old. We don't do those things anymore. We're all, you know, mature now, and we've gone from Q dogs to Omega men, sometimes. <laughs> but seriously, the folks that you used to kick it with, are you kicking it with now? And you know how crazy they are and how silly they can be? And they grow up and now they're married and they have children and they're responsible and it's like, wow. And that's where I am in my life now. And it's amazing to look back and see the people who you came up with become who they always wanted to be. And yes, I've got friends who look at me and say, the National Bar Association elected you to be the president? Have they lost their mind? What am I really trying to say? The people who did not like me in college don't like me now. The folks who I didn't really care for in college, I don't like them anymore either. But you know what's sad about that? What I want you all to get over? This is a true story. Last week, I was hanging out with one of my best friends, watching the first week of the football season. And he mentioned someone that he's gotten to know through work who I went to college with. She went to Spelman when I was at Morehouse. And she didn't like me in college. And he asked me why. And you know what happened? I didn't remember the details of the conflict. Because it was 25 years ago. 
And that's what's wrong with us. I'm talking about us now. Because we will sit around and not be in a relationship with someone because of what they did back in 1986. Anybody go to a black church? Then you know what I'm talking about. We have to get over that. Because our light-skinned brothers and sisters, I mean the real light-skinned brothers and sisters, they do business all the time with folks they don't like. You know why? To make that paper. But we will cut each other over nonsense. So whatever your dispute is right now, Whatever reason you don't particularly care for someone right now in your life, and they're a classmate of yours, or they're a high school classmate, please get over it. Because when you're 46 years old, you will probably not ever remember what the details were all about. So let me give you some, let, let me get my footing to give you an example of the three type of relationships that I hope you will develop. And so I didn't tell you, that the speaker, the intro didn't, tell you this, but I'm also an ordained Baptist preacher. I'm not going to preach a sermon to you, but I want to give you a, some context from a biblical perspective of relationships. How many of y'all have heard of King David? Okay. Well, I want you to read in the Old Testament, particularly the first and second Samuel, the life of King David. King David's life is an illustration of the three kind of relationships that you need to develop in your own life. How many of you all remember the story where King David was anointed to be the king of Israel? But at the time, Saul was the king. And David went to go hang out and work for Saul. And so one kind of relationship that you must have in life is this. You need to hook up with somebody who has what you want. David was anointed to be king. Saul was the king. So David and Saul developed a relationship. There is somebody you need to connect to who has what you want. If you want to be president of the National Bar Association one day and lead the largest association of black lawyers in the country, I want you to call the guy that just had the job before I did. I'm just kidding. You need to get to know me, right? If you want to be a judge, if you want to be a partner of a law firm, if you want to be a successful business person, you need to have a relationship with people who have where you're trying to go. So I heard the sisters say you need to network. Do more than just network. What do I mean by that? Just don't get our business card this weekend. You need to blow my email box up with the folks you meet this weekend. You need to be persistent because I'm busy and I will ignore your first email, I promise you. It's not personal. It's not personal. They will too. They'll get back to you eventually. But we're busy. So if you want to get my attention, you need to be persistent. You need to have relationships with people who have what you want, who have achieved what you're trying to achieve. And you need to learn their story. You need to learn their journey. You need to learn how they got to where they got. And I promise you, it's not all because of hard work doing good in school. This past week, I had lunch with the first man who ever gave me a job after law school. A real light-skinned brother. Really, really light-skinned brother. He took me to lunch at the country club where he's a member of. And we reconnected because we, had, we kind of had lost touch. But I remember him being a cool, sophisticated white guy. And I learned some things from him. And I told him something that he, that he taught me about being a lawyer. I recall one day we were driving back from a client meeting. And I was telling him about a particular statute in Illinois law that was not favorable for our client and how we could not win a particular matter because of the current law. And he said to me something 
that I never have forgotten, that's been one of the hallmarks of my, of my life with respect to being a lawyer and being someone in public service. He said, well, if the law is not in our client's favor, we'll change the law. I was like, dang. <laughs> we we, we going to change the law? And we spent the next two years lobbying the Illinois legislature to, a, to, to amend a particular statute in favor of our client. And as soon as I left the firm, about a, two months later, that law, that amendment, was passed. Develop relationships with the people who have what you want and are where you are trying to go. Not only did David have a relationship with Saul, David had a relationship with Saul's son named Jonathan. Jonathan and, Saul and David were best friends. David and Jonathan loved each other as brothers. The Bible says that what greater love is this than for a man to lay down his life for his brother. They were colleagues. They were like iron sharpening iron. The other relationship that you need to have is with your colleagues, with each other. You need to be each other's support system, each other's support base. Iron sharpening iron. If you and your boy are only talking about football, basketball, and girls, or young ladies, I'm sorry, you're having a very small-minded conversation. Now, don't get it twisted. I've been there. I like football. I'm in a fantasy league. I'm obsessed, I admit. I'm mad right now that the Bengals lost last night. I picked them to win. My boys and I talk about sports. Yes, men talk about women. Women talk about men. But you know what we don't talk enough about? How to make money together. How to build businesses together. You know what y'all should be talking about right now? Oh, look, you go to law school, I go to law school. When we get out, let's form a firm together. Let's pick a city. Let's pick a, a state. Let's pick a part of the country. And we're going to start a law practice together. Let's grow the largest black law firm in North Carolina. Let's grow the, the biggest and baddest law firm in the South or wherever you happen to be from. Some sisters should get together and say, we're going to grow the largest black female-owned law firm in this part of the country. Iron sharpening iron. Start having those conversations. And the problem with a lot of our black organizations, our sororities, our fraternities, our social clubs, when we have our business meetings, I love the bros. I, I love, I'm sorry, let me say it this way. I love Omega, but the bros stress me out. <laughs> anybody here in a fraternity? Any, anybody? Not yet? Okay. You're, what, what Friday are you in? Alpha? Okay, you have the same problem we got. I know you love Alpha, but the bros get on your nerves, don't they? You, you can preach this sermon right now. Because you know what happens? We have chapter meetings, and we talk about and argue about the most small, mundane, silly things. How were you made? Did you pledge right? Do you know the hymn? Do you know the founders' middle names? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, I would love for the alphas and the Qs and the noobs and everybody else, sigmas, iota, to have a chapter meeting and say, you know what we're going to do? We're about to buy up this block of property. Or we're going to redevelop the property and build senior citizens' homes for seniors in our community. Let's argue about, you know what? Let's argue about should we build a senior citizens' home or a youth center. Let's have that fight. But we fight about the smallest things. 
And so I'm asking you, your generation, to do better than my generation. Work together and have important conversations about real stuff that matters. We can talk trash about who's better, the Q's or the Alphas all day long. We should do that, you know, tonight at the reception we can talk a little trash. But at the chapter meeting tomorrow morning, let's have some serious conversations about our business. David and Jonathan were colleagues, they were best friends. They loved each other as brothers. So you should develop relationships throughout your life with colleagues. Because the people that you are with right now, 15, 20, 25 years from now, they will be in a position to either help you or not help you based upon the relationship. The third relationship that you have to have is the one that David had when he became king. David was king of Israel. His best friend Jonathan had died in battle. And he had lost touch with Jonathan's family. But one day he got word that Jonathan's son, Metibosheth, was in the neighborhood. And he invited Metibosheth to the king's palace. And he said to Metibosheth, because of the love and the friendship that I had with your father, you will always have a seat at the king's table. What am I really trying to say? That you ought to make sure you reach back and help someone who's coming up. Because Metibosheth had been crippled because he'd been dropped by a nurse and his feet were crippled. He couldn't walk. And David helped him sit at the king's table. So there is some eighth grader right now in your hometown. There's some elementary kid in your hometown. There is some cousin you got in your family who's looking at you. And they need you to help them come up. So make sure as you go get yours that you reach back and take, pull somebody up with you. That's why I'm a member of 100 Black Men of Chicago, because we're focused on mentoring young black men and girls, because we believe that they will be what they see. Check this out. In every relationship that I just told you about, between David and Saul, between David and Jonathan, and David and Matibosheth also know this about relationships. Relationships will last, will, will be for a reason, or a season, or a lifetime. Don't be upset about that. That's life. David and Saul fell out because Saul got jealous of David. David killed tens of thousands. Saul only was able to kill thousands. That's what the Bible says. Jonathan died in battle. That relationship ended because Jonathan died. And then Metibosheth became friends with David later in life when David was already king. And Metibosheth got a seat at the table because of a prior relationship. Check this out. Some of your blessings, some of your hookups will come not because you worked hard, not because you're so smart and so talented, but because of who you were connected to. So don't get this twisted that when you get somewhere that you think you made it all by yourself, that you are so accomplished and sophisticated. No. Some places you get invited to, you are invited because of a relationship that someone else has and brought you to the table. This happened to me just last month. I was on vacation. 
My wife and I, we go to Martha's Vineyard every summer on vacation. We're in church on Sunday morning. And a lady walks up to me and says, would you like to come to a reception this afternoon in honor of the dean of Howard Law School? I don't know the dean of Howard Law School. I know of her, but I had never really met her. Well, come, and we'd like you to meet the dean of Howard's Law School, Dean Walker. So I went to the reception, my wife and I, after church. And I met the dean of Howard's Law School. And we started talking. And I mentioned to her that I was looking to host an event in Washington, D.C., literally next week. And she said to me, well, why don't you have it at Howard's Law School? Are you serious? <laughs> yes. And we'll even pay for the reception after the event. Well, let, me, let me get this straight. You just met me. I'm telling you, I'm trying to find a place to have an event, a Supreme Court CLE, on the Supreme Court coming up, the session coming up for the Supreme Court. I've been un unable to secure a location, but you're going to offer your law school and you're going to pay for the reception after the event? She said, yes. And I was like, well, bless the Lord. <laughs> but I got to the reception because of a relationship because a Howard Law grad who likes me, who's a colleague of mine, invited me to come to the party. If she did not like me, she would have saw me in church and looked the other way. Beloved, I'm trying to tell you, you can work hard all you want. You can go to all the good schools, you can get all the good grades you want. But if you do not develop relationships intentionally, you will not be successful. So when you read about famous people, just don't read about where they went to school. Just don't read about their work history. Read about their relationships. Read, learn about the relationship between Oprah Winfrey and Maya Angelou and how Maya Angelou blessed Oprah Winfrey's life. Read about the relationship between Martin Luther King Jr. and Benjamin Elijah Mays, and how Dr. Mays mentored Dr. King. Read about the relationship between Barack Obama and a man you've never heard of named Emil Jones, State Senate President in Illinois back in the early 2000s. Read about those relationships and you will learn about their life story. And so, I'm peacock happy and ham hock proud to be here today. But I will tell you this, I would not be here today as the 75th president of the NBA if it had not been for relationships. I won my election by six votes, the second closest contested race in NBA's recent history. It was contentious, it was ugly, and I leaned on every relationship I had to be elected. I'm honored to serve, but I want you to know that today, tomorrow, work on connecting with each other and with us. And after this weekend, stay in touch with us, reach out to us, connect with each other, stay in touch with each other. And I hope over time, we can all develop better relationships. God bless you all.